Hi guys, now in this rocket revision series, our next topic is about 8085 microprocessor. So 8085 microprocessor is a very small topic, but at times uh, this is a small topic which tends to make you lose your rank just in one or two marks margin because it is very easy topic but very small topic but there is no much guidance available even on the internet or anywhere not even a textbook is available properly to study 8085 in a short and crisp manner because it is not actually a small topic very big topic it is a very huge topic but the content of this uh, processor for competitive exams is very small so it was uh, most of the time it is faced very much difficulty how to read how much to read so this rocket revision course though it is a rocket revision course only this is equivalent to a crash course in 8085 because such a small topic you need not study or you need not spend much time you just go through such topics which are most important for competitive exams because our main intention of studying 8085 is competitive exams not any semester examinations so welcome to the course so the main topics that you have to cover is these five topics so you should cover in this order only because by covering in this order you start feeling more comfortable and more confident about 8085 microprocessor generally what people do they start with architecture see there is nothing in architecture it is just some uh, theoretical aspects will be there everybody can do that but where everybody will get stuck is about register structure instruction set execution of small programs and interrupts also some people may remember so so in the order of difficulty or importance i have arranged these topics and you are supposed to study in this topic only it is not that if you study first architecture only then you'll understand register structure no you can study in this fashion also that is what i'm going to show you now so first topic that i will deal is about the register structure so what is a register register is a memory storage element isn't it memory storage element so what is the size of each register in 8085 microprocessor what I'm asking is size of register. So how do you decide the size of 8085 microprocessor means? Now we'll just look at this number 8085. So in this 8085, the first 8, what does it represent is? It represents data size. So what is the data size? The data size of 8085 processor is 8 bit. Or it also says number of data lines number of data lines also both are the same data size or data lines is 808 bit so how much is the data size that will be the size of a register each memory element in the 8085 so what is the size of each register each register can store 8 bit data in 8085 but still there are some special purpose registers which can store which can store 16 bit data also anyhow that is also that also we will discuss and uh, here 85 represents its year of manufacture or its year of uh, invention i can say so 8085 means it is 8 bit microprocessor invented in 1985 year okay so the size of data line or data line number of data lines in 8085 processor are 8 bit and another thing that you have to remember is address lines address lines uh, number of address lines in 8085 microprocessor is 16 bit so the 16 bit address lines in 8085 microprocessor okay like this so let us see the structure of the registers how the registers are organized in an 8085 microprocessor One, two, three, four, five, six. Door, Dishavitani,
So the registers in edge rate 5 processor are arranged like this. So the first cell here is called as register A and this is called as flag register F and then you have B, C, D, E and H, L. So these are the registers in edge rate 5 processor and width of each register or size of each register is how much? 8 bit. Uh, how much? 8 bit. That means a, A is also called as what? Accumulator. So, accumulator is a 8 bit data or 8 bit register. Next, flag is a 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit register. This is what? Flag register. Now, B is an 8 bit register. C is an 8 bit register. D is an 8 bit register. E is also an 8 bit register. H is an 8 bit register. L is also 8 bit register. And next, what do you have is stack pointer. It is also called as SP. And next is called as program counter pc now what is the size of stack pointer now you see up to here to here 8 bit here to here 8 bit that means stack pointer is 16 bit register program counter is 16 bit register so these two registers are called as special purpose registers so what are the number of special purpose registers in edge rate 5 two special purpose registers and their each size is 16 bit stack pointer and program counter and this remaining 8 number of registers which are there, these all are called as general purpose registers. General purpose registers. And size of each general purpose register is how much? Each is 18 bit. But still, by doing some uh, software ma manipulation, what we can do is, we can combine these both sets. That means, you are having H and L. Together, you can use it as a 16 bit storage. Okay? You can use the combination of H and L to store 16 bit. Similarly, the combination of D and E register you can store for 16 bit like this also you may use. So you may program whether to store 8 bit or 16 bit data in one line. Similarly B and C you can use to store 16 bit and similarly accumulator plus flag register may also be combined to store 16 bit data. So when you are combining accumulator with flag this resulting register which is called as it is called as PSW program status word program so, what is the purpose of accumulator is the question. So, the purpose of accumulator is to store result out of any operation. That means, if you are doing any operation using the programming in this microprocessor, if there is any generation of result, if there is anything such, such thing called as a result is generated, then that result will always be stored in accumulator. So, in which instructions you will get the generation of result or any result will arise means whenever you perform arithmetic operations and data transfer operations. For arithmetic and data transfer operations, you will have a result and that result will be going into A accumulator. Next, what is the purpose of a stack pointer? Let us say you are executing some program and there is a stack of memory. What is there? There is a stack of memory. Stack of memory means combination of various memory locations. So, these are the various memory cells. Let us say this location is 0, 0, 0. This location is 0, 0, 0, 1. This location is 0, 0, 0, 2. So, this is a stack of memory having like this 6 memory location, let us say. Now, you are executing some code. In that code, you want to retrieve the data which is there in some, this fourth register, okay, in this fourth register. So, you require somebody to point this fourth register from which data has to be fetched. So, there should be a pointer which will be pointing at that particular address location which is supposed to be retrieved data. So, that will be done by the program counter. The program counter will point at that memory location where the data is located which you require now. Next, uh, before that what we, what happens is, there is this stack pointer. So, this stack pointer will first identify which stack does this have. So, the top of the stack is pointed by the stack pointer. So, first stack pointer will come and it will be keep on locating all the four zeros. That means, always on the top, top of the stack. So, based on the stack pointer, it will come and it will search which memory location is required. So, program counter will be pointing the exact memory location. I hope you got the point. Let us say you are in a police station, you want to find a criminal. So, let us say here is your police station and there is a big colony and there are like three or four colonies where there are uh, possibility of this thief hiding. So, you are having some informer. That informer is called as a stack pointer. The, what that stack pointer he will do? He will be locating at this particular colony, let us say. That means this fellow is there in some other some or the other house inside this colony. So in this colony there are say 100 houses. So in between some houses there and there is program counter who is pointing the specific house where the 
thief is there so based on their stack pointer you'll enter into this colony and based on the program counter you'll go into that memory location where he is there and you will retrieve the data so that is the purpose of stack pointer and program counter in execution of any process or any operation and uh, stack pointer and program counter are special purpose register then they are always 16 bit see these points which i am repeating always see each and everything that i am discussing is very 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 important okay and again you see accumulator plus flag register is called as program status word because by seeing the register program status word you can have full idea you can have full information everything about that particular program because flag register will have the flags which will be have flag is nothing but it is a register which will be storing either one or zero as the data based on the operations resulting or the results out results which is coming out of some operation so accumulator plus uh, flag register will help you to give full information full status of any execution of a program okay now here you are having this 16 bit uh, register pair so this is also called as rp register pair h l d e b c these three fellows are also called as register pairs register pair is nothing but combination of two 8 bit register forming into a 16 bit so wherever you are supposed to find rp register pair that corresponds to a 16 bit data this thing also you have to keep in mind so next what we will do is we will see the structure of flag that is very important you should know the structure of flag so flag means what register f now tell me what is the size of flag register as i already told you it is a 8 bit register that means it is able to store 8 bits it is able to store how many bits 8 bits so let me draw the structure of this 8 bit register so this is the 8 bit flag register this this is bit number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so each bit see what is one bit one bit can be one or zero so here also it may be 1 or 0 so there are numberings for each there is naming there is labeling for each of the location so what is that means this side this seventh one is called as sign flag this is called as zero flag this is called as auxiliary carry this is called as parity flag and this is called as carry flag and uh, 5 3 and 1 are not used okay the bits 1 3 and 5 are not used in a flag register so he will directly ask you which of the following bits are not used in a flag register so they are called as d1 d3 and d5 are not used bits in flag register so how do you remember this uh, locations remembering of this location is also very very important so i used to remember sz apc is that a pc or i can say is that a pc is that a pc is that a program counter so is means yes that means i'm taking z as z is that is z a pc like this i used to remember so sz a pc so you will have sz and after z onwards you will be having gap after each and everything so sz gap a gap p gap c so c is called as carry flag carry flag p is called as parity flag a is called as auxiliary carry flag z is zero flag s is called as sign flag so let us discuss when this uh, flag will be zero or one now let us discuss about sign flag so sign flag will be one if result of any operation is a negative number okay if result is negative number sign flag will be set to one and if sign flag is zero means that result of particular operation is a positive number next is zero flag zero flag will be set when result of any that operation is zero when all zeros will occur in that particular uh, operation then it is set to one okay zero flag is one when result is zero and zero flag remains zero when the result is not zero what is next flag auxiliary carry flag so auxiliary carry flag will result when we will perform like this kind of uh, arithmetic operations let us say i am going to use this number i am going to add two numbers like this let us say i want to add two numbers like this if i am adding one plus one is zero 1 is carry here 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1 again 1 plus 1 is 0 and 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is how much 3 ones will be 1 and another carry 1 here 1 plus 1 is again 0 and here 1 plus 1 is again 0 here again carry 1 1 plus 1 is 0 and again carry 1 you are having 1 and another carry 1 so you see this is a how many bit data this is an 8 bit data 8 bit data means combination of 4 bit data plus 4 bit data one 4 bit data is called as nibble isn't it one four bit data is called as one nibble so when you are getting carry resulting from lower nibble to upper nibble now you see you are getting a carry here isn't it from lower nibble you are getting a carry so when this kind of carry is resulted this carry is stored in auxiliary carry and final carry is stored in the carry flag understood 
the carry arising out of the total operation is stored in carry and the carry resulting out of lower 4 bits into upper 5 upper 4 bits that is stored in auxiliary carry flag so that is called as auxiliary carry flag and carry flag and next is the parity flag so parity flag means what what do you mean by parity function counting the number of ones suppose if even number of ones are there in the result even ones are there in the result then parity flag will be set to 1 if odd ones are there in the result it is set to 0 for odd it is 0 so odd means o this is 0 like this you can remember to be precise what are general purpose registers means these six registers which are there what is this b c d e h l these six fellows are general purpose registers so how many general purpose registers are there six number of general purpose registers are there and two of them are special purpose registers and one is accumulator the other one is flag register so this is entirely about the register structure of 8085 but still there are some more small registers are there some temporary registers interrupt control registers are there but that is not important for us therefore i am not discussing the only important are these registers which i have discussed now so if you are having good idea about this once you are good with thorough with the registers then you can easily deal with the instruction set once you are comfortable with instruction set next you can do easily the program in the next video we will see about the instruction set thank you